What is going on lads and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a quick look at a V1.1 and what's going to be coming for that update when it comes on the 30th of the 5th and then eFootball League which is effectively divisions will return on the 2nd or the 3rd of June. I think it's the 3rd now that they've announced but we'll get into that in a couple of minutes right. So going to go through a roundup of that and just quickly bring you up to speed with all the news because Lads, there's a ton of stuff coming and a ton of updates, gameplay tweaks, you know, they're looking at UI tweaks, they're looking at like ease of access for for like how to get your team set up and a lot of different changes that they're going to be bringing to the in-game, to the graphics, to the control scheme, the responsiveness issues, everything. So before we kick on with that, we're obviously going to give you a quick reminder to log in between these dates, 26th to the 29th of uh, May. So the next three days you log in, you get 100,000 GP bang simple so season one is effectively over and season two there was going to be a transition between that now if you've missed the last episode i did with the roundup of season one check that out because we cover everything that they have announced in that but they have released a couple of new details for v1.1 so think of it as two updates right so v1.1 is actual a game it's like a base right think of it like your hardware and then the content like the dream team stuff and the season two is going to be like your um your software right so that's kind of the best way that i can think about it so it's going to come in one update but it's going to be kind of split between content the same way as like the legends come every monday and or every thursday and there's new players where the game goes down for maintenance so for season one which has been over right season two is going to be kicking off um with all this new stuff here so the original post that they said is phase two of eFootball league which was originally scheduled to commence on the 2nd of june has now been postponed a day later to the 3rd of june right so what they've said here as i say go back and check out the the the, the other video that i did but effectively phase two of the eFootball league is obviously scheduled to commence here on this date but they were originally going to have it the same uh, time as when they were going to be bringing v1.1 right so v1.1 when they talk about that is going to be all this information here. So this is going to be released in the 30th of the 5th, but the divisions and this sort of stuff here is going to be released on the 3rd of the 6th. So I know that this is confusing a lot of people and I don't blame them for being confused. I don't blame you guys for being confused because it took me a couple of times uh, to read about it as well. But as I said, with that software hardware kind of analogy, I could be totally throwing you off even more there. But think of it as you've got your content updates and you've got your gameplay updates, right? So you've got your patches, which is the gameplay updates, and you've got your content, which is your actual modes and stuff to do in the modes, like events and stuff, cards, all that sort of stuff, right? So they've just said that this is going to be launching back. Divisions are going to be coming back with season two of the eFootball League, right? On the 3rd of the 6th. That's the first thing you need to get out of this video. Secondly, there's a load of stuff to go through here. Now, I'm going to go through it fairly quick because I'm going to show you a couple of examples of stuff that they're working on and then we're going to touch on what, what the big changes are, right? So we're actually going to start with this stuff here, which is the main you know bulk of this video, right? They talk a lot about adding a new couple of bits of content here and there and they also talk about a load of tweaks to the gameplay. Goalies, defense, uh, offense, attacking, all that sort of stuff. Passing, response times, everything. Brilliant. Cursor changes, everything, right? So really quickly, this update file, which is going to be V1.1, the new update, will be released on the 30th of the 5th, which is three days from now. This update, V1.1, contains the following, right? Improvements and updates and tweaks and whatever. So they're going to be adding objectives to Dream Team, right? They're going to also be adding this, which is going to be a maximum of 10 game plans that you'll be able to have for your squad. People have asked me, does this mean that you're going to be have, able to have 10 squads? From this reading, like basically just taking it exactly word from word, it looks like it's just going to be 10 different game plans that you can save. Um, so hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully it is squads, but from the word in there, it looks like it's just game plans, such as sub-tactic, similar to sub-tactic. Dream Team added suggested function in player progression. Progression points can now be allocated automatically. So you can just basically, you know, choose to let the computer do it for you if you want to upgrade Pedri and he'll do it and bring him up to the best that he can be. Um, you know, instead of you having to focus on what to upgrade him and be tweaking things, right? Updates and additions. Updated license data from leagues, clubs, national teams. Updated team manager and player data. Updated stadiums, boots, balls, commentary. So again, that's similar to kind of like the data drops that they used to um the content drops that they used to with the with the old patches um where they had like you know you had your updates update and then you had your like stuff that you had to download in the game so they've now rolled it into like the v1.1 or the new versions that they get with v1.2 they'll add more stuff like that 
Now, before we get into all this, right, I'm going to have a look at the Dream Team added objectives, right? So we do have the match pass, right? Now, they haven't mentioned anything about the match pass here, but that is just a quick look at the match pass there that, that, that they originally released. Now, this might be subject to change because this was obviously in the original roadmap that released way back when, right? So as you can see here, you know, when you're logging in, um, you've got two tiers here, it seems to be. You've got the yellow or the gold, the yellow, the blue. Um, that's obviously mixed up and matched up here. Um, you know, you're probably this gold one, I would imagine here is going to be like the premium one. And then you're obviously going to have this one down here, which is probably the free version. So obviously the top one up here, you get more, you get every day, you get something. And then this one here is obviously you get less. And then this one here, you get the least, right? So again, this is all subject to change. I don't know what they're going to be doing with the match pass, but we'll get back to that when we hear more about it. But for this, right, the objectives. So this is what they were originally said about the objectives in terms of talking about with the original roadmap, right? So they had objectives, weekly objectives, and campaign objectives, right? Now, we don't know if this is going to be like in-game objectives, that it's like score five goals with Benzema in 10 games, or it's going to be weekly objectives, score 50 goals with your with your squad, or, you know, have five clean sheets and get like 50,000 GP. We don't know what they're going to be. But what when they say here, right, when we talk about the added the objectives, like, does that mean everything? We're we're yet to see, right? We're yet to see what them object what those objectives are going to be. But they should be able to expand them out a good bit in fairness, right? Now, on to the actual gameplay side of stuff, right? So the biggest thing that I kind of am drawn to here is the response. Anything that says response or fixing the defenders and their their ability to actually realize they're on a football pitch looking to intercept the ball is brilliant for me, right? It needs to be fluid, it needs to be fast. Enhanced input response for cursor changes. Now I'm gonna show you a quick uh, clip here right where you'll see that like all these issues here where they talk about the input response for cursor changes and input delay and stuff like that right they've talked about it they talk about it in this page they talk about it in this page here where i'll show you in a second where they're talking about it where it's gameplay fixes and adjustments shooting you know offense traps whatever right but here for the inf enhanced input response for cursor changes right so we're going to see a clip here right where i'm ronaldinho i'm trying to pass the ball now, i pass the ball right as i turn in here now maybe corona coming into the screen obviously has an impact but i'm passing it here and it doesn't input the input doesn't actually take into consideration that i'm pressing x rolls on and back to same thing here so this is lesser kind of the game's fault this is just more of an animation issue um and it happens but it takes a touch even though i've powered up the bar but this is the one here that is more of an issue right so i'm van dyke there trying to get across i can't switch to either the goalie who i'm trying to manually get and you can see that maldini here watch how many changes it does with maldini because I'm wrestling for wrestling for it as the keeper goes off. And eventually it gives me Donnarumma when the ball has gone past him. So yeah, there is a lot of stuff like that that they are working on. And obviously the input response for cursor changes, that's a huge thing. Because look, lads, right? I want the game to be as realistic as possible. But I also want it to be fun and fair. And that's the biggest thing when you have a sports game. It needs to be fast and fluid. It needs to be responsive. That when I'm clicking a player... Even if the game is like, no, you're making a mistake by clicking clicking this player. Let me make that mistake and get caught out of possession because I wanted to pick my left back over my center back. You know, like I don't want it assisted. Like I don't want it like switching and not being responsive enough, responsive enough to take my input into it. So I'm really happy that they've enhanced that response for the cursor changes. That is huge. And I'm glad that they're aware of it and they're highlighting it because, it, you know, it puts it under the spotlight. Fix an issue where passing clear commands may not trigger properly when the ball is in midair. Again, I haven't suffered from that too much, but it can happen. Uh, fix an issue where the super cancel command fails to cancel the command input prior to quick free kick and throw in restarts. That can happen as well, um, where you're trying to like, you might press X to pass the ball from a quick pass off and then you'll see that it's blocked and you try to auto cancel or so super cancel and it doesn't work and he'll end up taking a pass. You get intercepted and then you might concede. Fix an issue where making a return pass without any L-stick input after performing a 1-2 pass or a pass and run will see that return pass being made with speed and directional assist. So this is more for, I would say, the way that this worded here, even though the manual pass level was set to level 4. So this is more for FUMA players, for manual players with no assist settings. So when you were just literally just being able to ping pong around, right? So when you're playing a guy that is on playing on the most assisted, like he does, he literally doesn't even need to direct where the ball is going. It'll just pass to the closest man or the man running on from a one, two. So yeah, I would like to see that toned down a bit, but for manual players, they're going to have that toned down a good bit here. Fix an issue where some commands may become erroneous after signing, after a signing player movement to directional pads, uh, buttons in game settings. Uh, that's just obviously for people that change onto the direction, uh, 
uh, buttons. Dribbling, enhanced dribbling response. Again, that word response. So enhanced input response and enhanced dribbling response, which is music to my ears, lads, right? And then also they talk about body position and body shape and uh, the appropriate body position in regards to where the ball is. Now, moving on to this one, which is kind of the, the other part of it, right? This update file con contains the following improvements. Gameplay fixes and adjustments to shooting. Fix an issue where chip shots are overly accurate in certain situations. Yeah, that can happen as well, where the player doesn't even need to take a touch. He can just like like first first time from a like a mid a kind of like a first time volley chip where it looks like so unrealistic and so like no inertia on the ball or the player's movement or his foot plant or anything like that i know it doesn't need to be you know um incredibly incredibly like depth in depth like that but you can like spray the ball across from the box and first time chip shot in and over the keeper and it works nearly every time so they're looking at that traps when the ball is actually controlling the ball enhancement so that players are now taking more appropriate touches for floating passes coming in from behind so again that might slow down the pace of the game a fraction and bring in a bit of skill into it interested to see how that works so then attacking and defending right implemented adjustments to possession game and out wide team play style adjustments were implemented specifically to the positioning of wingers and side mid midfielders on the opposite flank when the ball is deep in the opposition's half right so say you're playing a 4-3-3 and you've got your forwards you know um up hugging the touchline but you're under attack right your players should under those out wide team play style and possession game play style should tuck in more centrally to give you an outlet that when you clear the ball or you spray it long ball forward that you've got a man there instead of hugging the touchline when you don't have possession of the ball that's what it says that it would work like in the game but that's not how it works a lot of the time so they are looking at that and then when you're defending implemented adjustments to the positioning of defenders in all team play styles so again this is a frequent occurrence of where the attacking side would score straight after kick out without losing possession this is huge right so sometimes no matter what way you've got your team set up no matter if you've got five at the back or if you've got whatever, right? Sometimes the players will just run forward no matter what from a kickoff. And like your opponent will score, as they say here, he would score straight after kickoff without losing possession. So you wouldn't even be able to get your foot on the ball from like three passes, right? So that's again an adjustment to that and the positioning of defenders of where you have them actually set, that they're in the, in the positions that you have them set when they're defending a kickoff. So that's really, really good as well. Fix an issue where the player defending the near post during opposition's corner kick sometimes turn his back against the ball and cannot make appropriate clearances. This is an issue when, especially at the front post, the defender won't attack it. He'll just turn his back to it and it can sometimes hit the back of his head, lads, I swear. Fix an issue where the defending side cannot mark opposition players appropriately if the attacking side uses off the ball. So again, that's a lot of the time... Um, when you go short from a corner or stuff like that, uh, the players will just completely switch off and you won't be able to actually like close them down until they get the ball. So again, fix a load of issues with the goalkeepers, including, you know, bringing out the goalkeeper when you press it, he may not dash forward. They fix that, fix an issue where the goalkeeper may go down into his own goal when holding the ball. Haven't seen that one to be fair. Fix an issue where the goalkeeper may position himself too close towards the near post. So again, instead of keeping a wide berth and kind of making yourself big as all goalies would do, uh, you know, you make yourself very small at the front post for an easy sweat across the box. Fix an issue where the goalkeeper may not attempt to catch on oncoming balls. We've seen Donnarumma, lads, in my Dream Team Chronicle series. I mean, all my days, I could show you a few of them where he literally just, literally all he has to do is like sneeze at the ball and he'd probably intercept it, but he just completely misses it, forgets he has hands for a couple of minutes. Um, goalkeeper would deflect the ball into the goal as possible to push it outside of the goal. Again, that's rebounds. That has happened to me a couple of times, actually, um, especially uh, from free kicks and fix an issue where uh, deflect trajectory if it happens while he performs an in-jump motion, pre-jump motion, right? So fouls. They've also adjusted penalties being given inside the box. I'm mixed on that one. I'm 50-50. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of that. I think if you're giving away a lot of penalties in the box, you need to look at your defending. Now, have I been done? And have I been caught out by the game thinking that I uh, have done it? More so with this, implementing adjustments to the foul decision algorithms to when the player's feet make contact with the opposition when performing a pass while sliding. So if you are doing a true ball and it kind of ricochets, but you can still make it, it's like a 50-50 between your back and your forward. You can actually be holding X to pass the ball and he'll go into a slide and follow through. Even if you win the ball, follow through, take out the defender and you get a yellow card for it. So I'm glad they fixed that because that is very frustrating. It's been in the game for ages. Implemented adjustments to the offside decision algorithms requiring player involvement. Again, that is a huge thing as well that they have never really focused on where it's like the player is nowhere near and they'll just still call offside just because he's in that position, even though the ball is nowhere near him. 
uh again so shoulder charges they talk about that that they're going to be having more of a kind of a, an impact that if you do get the call right it'll be called better if you get it wrong you can sometimes get yellow cards and a lot of people were doing was right they were making shoulder charges instead of sliding tackles because they kind of the ai cops on to the sliding tackles if you slide late you will get a yellow card unless you know you break the you break that now obviously you can always break that by like say sliding again so if you're about to get yellow card most people will just slide again and get like two for the price of one tesco special where you'll get two fouls in and you'll only get one yellow card but if you leave the player run long enough the referee will just have temporary amnesia and forget about it now they have fixed that a little bit but as a result the yellow cards may be issued when these fouls are called they mean that when you're actually following through with a shoulder charge now it doesn't really get called it's nice to see that they're going to treat that the same as a slide tackle. And then they say other adjustments. They also talk about adjustments to the camera and to the display there. Uh, the third of the fourth uh, part here is they talk about a lot of bugs and fixing general fixes to the game, the actual game and the way it works and stuff like that itself. So they talk about player gazes. They talk about how unnatural hand movement during penalty kicks. Game become, may, may become inoperable if the ball is thrown off the pitch when performing a long throw during a quick restart. Um... You know, there's a lot of people that will try that sort of stuff, you know, so you just have to be always looking to improve that if you're the developers. May raise their foot unnaturally during certain instances, such as when controlling high upcoming balls, oncoming balls, goalkeeper, uh, or the graphics of the goal score, or graphics of the linesman flags, and the goal score may move unnaturally. You can have a read through all of them, lads. It's basically, you know, about the, the, the graphics and the, the actual UI itself. No mention on the blue and the yellow that's here to stay, unfortunately. And then this one, last but not least, they talk about a couple of different things here, um, such as like changes to how, how information is displayed and following improvements to the overall um, kind of display of stuff and how stuff works in the game, right? Uh, so yeah, like everything there is pretty self-explanatory. You can guy, guys can have a quick read of that, but it's not really that much important stuff to be honest um the other stuff the gameplay stuff is the most important so yeah let's look i mean at the end of the day right like the biggest thing for me i would say is definitely the defending and it is definitely the input response for cursor changes the dribbling and also for the also for uh, where is it also for the uh it, goalkeepers so bringing out the goalkeepers and stuff like that and also for like when you're you know actually on the ball um you know you have a bit more control because they talk about tightening up the dribbling and stuff like that as well which is huge and look i think there's always going to be a debate right just to close this video out there's always going to be a debate between realism you know and fast and fluid right when people talk about games being fast and fluid and responsive i don't think that they want arcade style like stuff where it's like you know super cyan kind of like anime style like you know gameplay you know uh football style where it's like everything is just instant one touch pass everything like that i think what they talk about is that when you press a pass button it passes whether it's going to be intercepted or not that's up to you whether to decide you know what i mean the same way as in warzone if you shoot your gun the gun shoots you know what i mean it's not waiting to say like no no i have to turn around the corner and line up the shot before you shoot it just shoots when you press the button so that can be very frustrating as i showed you in the earlier clip but yeah, let me know, guys. Let me know what you think. A bit of a longer video than I normally do to cover this. But there is a ton of stuff in there in that. And I'm excited to see, mostly, I'm excited to see the, the objectives, lads, to see what they are. Because that's been something I've been lobbying for so long. And I know a lot of other people have been as well. That you need to have something other than just try harden. You know, try harden the whole time gets very frustrating and it's very tiring and it's very hard to keep it up because some people play the game 40 hours a week and they're going to smash you. Some people have only have time to play three or four hours a week and you're going to be at a disadvantage. So you need something to keep you playing to have fun, you know, to be able to jump on with your friends when they do add lobbies and stuff. I think that's the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is co-op and stuff like that. Co-op objectives and stuff would be absolutely game changing. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you impressed with that? My big takeaway from it is definitely 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 the enhanced dribbling responsive times and the input here where we saw about their um the cursor changes which is huge and the defense and defense stuff as well that they talked about uh so yeah that is really really nice i think um and i think i'm going to be very happy when when it comes out but let's see what happens lads and we will see you the next time i've been the midnight kid on pez universe we will talk to you later lads peace